The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, this is Lauren Wenzel at the National Marine Protected Area Center, and we're very happy to be hosting uh, today's webinar and the MPA webinar series with Octo and EBM tools. And uh, today we are going to be hearing about UN Environment's Clean Seas Program, and we have Carla Friedrich with us. So I will introduce the webinar topic and Carla in a moment, but I just want to take a moment to remind you all that uh, we really want to hear from you. So as you listen to Carla's presentation and you have questions or comments, please go ahead and put those in the question box in the webinar interface uh, because we will leave plenty of time for questions and discussion at the end. So um, UN Environment launched Clean Seas in February 2017 to engage governments, the general public, civil society, and the private sector in the fight against marine plastic litter. This campaign is addressing the root cause of marine litter by targeting the production and consumption of non-recoverable and single-use plastic. And so we're going to be hearing a lot more about that uh, from Carla Friedrich, who is our speaker today. She joined the UN Environment's North America office in February 2012 as a program officer for ecosystem management, and her work spans terrestrial, coastal, and marine ecosystems. And she also serves as the office for North America's focal point for chemicals and waste. And uh, before joining UN Environment, she was an ORISE fellow at US EPA, and she has also done work and studies in Puerto Rico. So welcome, Carla, and we'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much, and, and thanks to everyone who's uh, tuned in today. Um, I just, um, you know, I, I, I do have to tell you a bit about our, our organization, for those who don't know it. A, we're the United Nations Environment Program. Um, we were established in 1972 as the environmental voice of the UN. And, you know, we have the mission, as you can see here, of providing leadership and encouraging partnership in caring for the environment, um, you know, and, and looking at it from the perspective of, of present and future generations, of course. Uh, we have uh, several programmatic areas uh, in which we organize our work. Uh, you know, of course, many issues such as the one that we will be talking about today, uh, you know, on marine plastics cut across various areas, including ecosystem management and chemicals and waste and, you know, even several of the others in, in one way or another, but this is how we're um, currently organized. And we have a, a, our headquarters are in Nairobi, Kenya, but we have a global presence uh, and we have six regional offices. And I, I sit here in Washington in a regional office for North America, uh, which uh, engages uh, the US and Canada, both at the government level, uh, but also, you know, uh, the academic institutions here, uh, NGOs and, and various other stakeholders in the, in the two countries. Uh, and we also have, you know, several sub-regional offices, liaison and, and, and country offices uh, all around the world. So now um, to the issue of, of marine plastic pollution. Uh, many of you are probably aware of, of some of these figures that we, we see in, in, in various publications, etc. You know, each year at least 8 million metric tons of plastic end up in the ocean, and that's the equivalent of one dumpster truck per minute. Uh, the majority of this litter, um, is, you know, is, is estimated at around 80% is plastic. Uh, and, you know, of, of the more than 311 million tons of plastic that was produced worldwide in 2014, for example, one third of this was packaging and most of it is single use plastics. And in addition to that, um, around 75% of ocean plastics uh, originate from land-based based sources, many of which emanate from uh, uncollected waste. So the, the, the issue is, is very big and the impact of, of this, uh, you know, plastic centering the ocean uh, are many. You know, once, once in the ocean, these plastics are extremely costly or, or, or impossible to, to fully recover. Uh, and the, the consequences on marine wildlife, on coastal economies, and uh, on human health are definitely a reason for, for grave concern. Uh, marine plastic and microplastic affects over 600 species of marine animals. Uh, through various ways, including entanglement and ingestions. Um, it threatens marine ecosystems. Uh, it accumulates so uh, toxic substances and it transports invasive species. 
the costs associated to the impacts of, of marine ecosystems is estimated to be at least $8 billion per year. Um, the food and beverage and, and retail sectors uh, were responsible for about two thirds of these costs. And it is estimated that um, the, the revenue loss, especially to fisheries and ag aquaculture and the marine tourism industries, uh, as well as the cost of cleaning up plastic litter on beaches is, is what comprises this, this high, you know, a billion per year uh, estimated cost of damages. And we know that there are, you know, potential dangers uh, for human uh, health as well, since uh, many, you know, fish uh, and other organisms in the ocean are also, um, you know, absorbing or eating, uh, you know, uh, pieces of plastics, which, which can contain, uh, can absorb many other toxics as well. Um, before I go to, to the Clean Seas campaign per se, uh, here's a, uh, just a bit of background. In 2011, um, you know, as we were recognizing the alarming, you know, current and projected increase in plastic use uh, and, and marine litter in, in general and the serious consequences that that has, uh, UN Environment and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration hosted a large international marine debris conference in, in Honolulu. And this conference really catalyzed a lot of attention uh, around the world and, and spurred action to begin to seriously tackle this problem, you know, all around the globe. In 2012, the UN launched the Global Partnership on Marine Litter, which is a voluntary partnership of, of international agencies, governments, businesses, academia, and other partners, all with the goal to protect human health and the environment by reducing marine litter and improving, you know, the management of, of uh, you know, waste such as plastics. Um, there's been a lot of uh, political momentum that has gathered since then, including through resolutions addressing marine litter and microplastics that have been adopted in the last, well, first uh, and, and only three United Nations Environment Assemblies, uh, which have taken place thus far, thus far in um, 2014, 2016, and the last one this past December in, in 2017. Uh, they all uh, passed uh, resolutions, uh, you know, dealing with this issue of marine plastic litter and, and microplastics. Um, and furthermore, you know, as many of you probably know, tackling the issue of marine litter directly contributes to reaching the sustainable development goals and their associated targets, and especially a uh, goal 14, which focuses on oceans and its target 14.1, which aims to, by 2025, prevent and significantly reduce marine pollution of all kinds, in particular from land-based activities, including marine debris and nutrient pollution. So reducing marine litter is key, of course, to this goal 14 of, co of conserving and sustainably using the oceans, but it is also very relevant to other goals, such as the goal 12 uh, of ensuring a uh, sustainable consumption and production as well as as many others um, so now to our main topic the clean seas campaign so almost exactly a year ago un environment launched uh, the clean seas campaign which is an ambitious five-year global campaign to tackle marine plastic pollution by addressing uh, the various root causes the campaign aims to work with governments, with the private sector, and with the general public to find solutions to this uh, global problem. Our goal is to have industrial plastics management improved, non-recoverable plastic items uh, such as microplastics in cosmetics uh, phased out completely, and uh, single-use plastics significantly reduced by 2022. Um, as you can see, our main focus really is on preventing waste in the first place. And then, of course, managing the waste that we do have. Um, so we're doing this through a three-phased approach um, that, you know, started last year and will take us until 2021. Um, you know, and the clean seas approach uses evidence of, of the impacts downstream that we were talking about, you know, on, on beaches and oceans, uh, 
you know, and, and, and coastal economies and of citizens' connections to the sea to in turn drive public support for action to address issue the issue of marine litter upstream. So we're, we're looking at, at downstream impacts, but really the campaign aims at working on solutions that are upstream. We work with the governments, uh, you know, to promote policies that tackle uh, prevention uh, of, of, marine of marine plastics at the national level. We, we work with the private sector to improve the design of products, including for better recyclability, looking at uh, looking for alternative materials where feasible, and improving production practices to minimize their plastic footprint. Um, you know, and these are many, among many other things that the, the, the private sector can do to reduce plastic pollution. And of course, the campaign also works with the general public um, to raise awareness and, and mobilize actions. So, you know, this is the, the, the um, and anyone who goes into the website can take the, the Clean Seas Pledge. And uh, this can be taken as individuals, as companies, governments, or non-governmental organizations. And one can join commitments that have already been created or generate new commitments. So now that we're uh, just about one year into the campaign, here are some of the main successes. Um, th so the goals for the for the initial phase of the Clean Seas campaign have actually been met or surpassed in the first year. The outreach campaign has received unprecedented media attention, um, and we have had uh, 40 governments that have already joined the Clean Seas campaign. That was actually the the target. So as of as of now, we, as of December, we have 40 governments. Um, a, which have made commitments as part of of, uh, of clean seas, and and these commitments range from developing national action plans on marine litter to taking regulatory actions such as laws or or market based instruments to reduce marine litter, marine plastics in particular, to carrying out awareness raising activities such as cleanups. You know, there's there's a full range of of um, commitments that government has taken have taken, and you know. Many of these commitments are quite remarkable. You know, Indonesia has pledged to cut its marine uh, litter by 70% by 2025. Uruguay is preparing a nationwide tax on, on plastic bags, and Kenya completely banned single use plastic bags. The UK has banned microbeads. Um, you know, and a, a number of, of, of other countries you know, from France to Philippines um, to, as, as I mentioned before, the UK and Uruguay have in, introduced change uh, uh, restrictions or, or, or other types of, uh, of charges on, on the use of disposable plastic items, especially single-use items. Um, the campaign has also secured a number of key private sector and institutional partnerships, including Dell, the Volvo Ocean Race, 11th Hour Project, a, 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 the World Association of Zoos and Aquariums, and several others. Um, UN Environment also participates in, in working groups that have been uh, generated by, by some uh, companies um, and that are gathering, um, you know, that have the aim of, of improving plastic management uh, in their production processes, uh, reusing plastic recovered from oceans. You know, there's various various different ways in which uh, groups of companies are, are getting together to to try to see how they can tackle the issue. And so we're we're uh, collaborating with them to to you know to to help and ensure that that um, they meet their they meet their goals and that they, that we provide a uh, sound scientific information to them as well. Um, in terms of public engagement, uh, we've had over 55,000 individual pledges to change behavior or to take action against marine litter, marine plastics, um, and these have been recorded uh, across the, the various platforms uh, connected with the campaign, which include the Clean Seas website, the Beat Pollution campaign, and the My Little Plastic Footprint uh, app. Um, that I'll mention a little bit in, in a little bit. Um, so, you know, the political momentum behind the Clean Seas campaign is really unprecedented. Um, you know, as I mentioned, there's, you know, 40 countries that have joined and combined their, um, you know, their coastline 
length is a, over 50 per percent of, of the total of the world. So that that's definitely significant. As I mentioned before, you know, in the three United Nations Environment Assemblies since 2014, there have re repeatedly been resolutions to tackle the issue of marine uh, marine litter and microplastics that, that really show, you know, the, the commitment of, of governments to continue to work on this issue. Uh, and we have groups like the, the G7 and the G20, which have established uh, action plans on marine litter. And we're very encouraged, by the way, to see Canada elevating this issue among its priorities for the current presidency, uh, their current presidency of the G7, which they have this year. And there are many other examples of, of this political momentum, but you know, it, it, you know, this, this goes to show that, that the time is definitely uh, right. Um, so we, our outreach efforts have included, you know, hundreds of social media posts, including news, videos, pictures, and infographics, you know, such as this one that that try to, you know, highlight the problem in, you know, in, in visually appealing ways. Um, and and these, for example, highlighting a country initiatives to reduce marine plastic pollution. You know, not necessarily directly linked to clean seas, but things that that governments are doing uh, around the world to to tackle this problem. And these, you know, other other infographics. Uh, you know, there's there's many of of these. You know, showing different parts of of. Uh, of the problem and the possible solutions, etc., uh, and and many, if not all, of these have been available in 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 various languages. and And the aim is to have all the information of the campaign in all of the UN languages. And there's uh, several associated initiatives. You know, to mention a few here, um, there's a, um, a massive open online course on marine litter that uh, that I will mention shortly. Um, there's a, there was an innovation challenge uh, for universities, which uh, uh, attracted uh, 187 entries uh, among the the areas of the challenge, which were design and engineering, communication, prediction and recovery, and economics. And, and the winners of, of, these, uh, of this innovation challenge are going to be announced uh, next, next month in the sixth International Marine Debris Conference, which I'll mention too. And then this uh, My Little Plastic Footprint, the uh, app that has been undertaken in collaboration with the Plastic Soup Foundation has also received uh, a lot of attention. And we're working on several other uh, initiatives to, to further the goals of the campaign. Uh, so just a quick note on this uh, massive open online course. Um, it's the second one that has been uh, organized. Uh, the one in English uh, already uh, happened uh, in mid last year, but I, I, I believe all the information is available online. And uh, you know, for any Spanish speakers uh, <laughs> who are joining us today, or, or if you have other contacts, uh, the the, uh, the massive open online course in Spanish began just a couple or less weeks ago at, in, at the end of January and the registration is still open so so uh, you can join that and that's been undertaken in collaboration with the Open University of the Netherlands. And if I'm correct, I, it, I think it has a, a leadership track which is uh, two weeks uh, long and then there's a, a longer track for people who want to go in depth into into many other topics. So, you know, what's what's our way forward? Well, as I mentioned before, the, the goals of the of the phase one have been met. Um, you know, the a lot of government commitments, over fifty-five thousand individual pledges, and various private sector partnerships that have been initiated. And now we're going to the second phase of the campaign. So 2018 will mark the transition to, you know, from phase one, which was about educating and engaging, you know, the public, governments, private sector, etc., to phase two, which is really more closely focused on collaborating, on, 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 you know, diving deep into the partnerships that have been generated both with governments and with the private sector. Um, the aim of this second phase is to really bring to scale the results that have been achieved so far, 
um, increase the number of partnerships, also diversify the types of partnerships, uh, and also monitor progress against the commitments that have been recorded so far. Um, and of course, the outreach will continue to be expanded, and and you know we will continue to provide regular science-based information, reports, uh, outputs of the campaign, etc. Will continue to be disseminated. Um, so phase two, as I mentioned, will will build on the heightened awareness and and concern that has been um, you know achieved on the first uh, on the first phase. A phase and and really go into um, action by driving change in in government policy making and in industry practices. Uh, so you know we're we're starting this this uh, second phase. It's not you know they're all in a way of course related. It it builds on the first one, and you know at at the the final phase, which I guess will begin around uh, 2020 or 2019. Um, it aims to replicate and, and scale up the achievements of, of the first two phases. So, you know, join us if you haven't already. Um, you know, there's many, many opportunities to, to collaborate with us, uh, you know, be it as an individual or as part of an organization. Um, of course, you know, if, if you work for, for governments, uh, and you know, especially in governments that haven't yet joined the the campaign, please you know feel free to reach out to us. We we really want to to uh, continue to to increase the the work that that we're doing and really you know really be able to achieve the goals. Not not just in terms of communication, but of course in terms of action and ultimately in reducing uh, marine plastic pollution all around the world. So. You know, as as uh, as we say, together we can turn the tide on plastic. <laughs> and I, you know, I would be remiss not to mention a, a key event coming up next month. Uh, it's the sixth International Marine Debris Conference, which is hosted by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and UNEP. UN environment and uh, it will take place in San Diego and we expect uh, over 700 participants and you know we really hope that this event will further catalyze the much needed attention to tackle the problem of marine litter uh, you know the previous conference in Honolulu was a big success in terms of you know raising awareness and getting people to work on it you know it, it would be great if we can really drive that momentum into into concerted action as well and in June um, of 2018 India will host a the World Environment Day which is our biggest you know environment uh, celebration in the UN uh, around the theme this year is the theme is going to be plastic pollution and by the way Earth Day this year here in the US will also focus on on plastic pollution so you know the momentum is not slowing um I, you know we hope that that you can join us in some of these events by the way i mentioned um, that the host for world, world environment day is india but we do have uh, events happening at all the different regions including this one and uh, my colleague laura fuller here would be you know uh, happy to 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 get in touch with people interested in 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 knowing more about uh, about the event of on World Environment Day, which is June fifth of, of every year. Um, so, as I said before, you know the momentum is not slowing. Um, so, thank you for the attention, and I'll now be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Great, thank you so much, Carla. That was that was a great overview, and uh, I so I would encourage people to go ahead and send in your questions or comments. Uh, there's a lot of food for thought here. Um, first of all, there were a couple of questions about will there be copies of slides and recordings, and the answer is yes. Uh, the recording, as always, will be posted uh, at the OCTO website, and we will also make the, sh the slides available. Um, so one question is uh, about what were the two or three approaches that you think helped you reach your goals so quickly? Uh, was there something that you were kind of surprised at how successful it was? Um, well, I think I think the approach has been to really go about this on on many many through many many avenues, and I think, you know, part of the reason that that we've 
managed to get so many governments engaged is because we have been dealing with this issue for several years and we've really highlighted um, you know the the issue uh, you know I, I think I think it, it's been a, a two a, a two-way thing we've highlighted it to governments and in turn governments have uh, made the the request to UN environment to really tackle this issue and I think the the fact that it was um, you know there were resolutions on this topic in the last uh, three a United Nations Environment Assemblies, you know, show that there's momentum. I mean, we would like to think that a lot of the momentum comes from the work that organizations like us and, and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration here in the US and, and many others around the world have taken. I think we have many partners around the world, in, you know, in many stakeholders that are collaborating with us, which have really helped with the outreach on this. And as I said before, I think that the moment is really ripe. I mean, there, there's attention to this issue, in, you know, at, at, at regional levels in groups like the G7 and the G20. Um, you know, it's, it's I, I'm, I, I guess I, I don't have a very good answer to the question, but I think it's been a, the, the approach has been to, uh, you know, reach out as widely as possible. And I think that's why this second phase is really going to focus on, okay, now, you know, now let's go towards action. Let's make sure that we don't just, uh, you know, gather all this support and <laughs> all these commitments. And so let's make sure that we actually, uh, you know, follow through by, taking actions at various levels to, to be able to reduce uh, marine plastic pollution. So we hear sometimes marine plastic referred to as a tap, like turning off the plastic tap, because of course it continues to, to pour into production as we try to clean it up. And so there are a couple of questions here about the life cycle, the circular economy, and how can we make sure that we are reducing the amount of plastic that's entering the environment. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yes, so we really look at this issue, so UN Environment especially really looks at this issue from a full life cycle perspective. And, and we really look at it, you know, we started the, looking at the impacts downstream, uh, you know, and that's the reason we want to, to, to tackle the issue. But really in terms of solutions, we're focusing upstream, uh, you know, all the way up to the production level where there's so many opportunities to, you know, work with, with producers in terms of product design, uh, you know, as I mentioned before, improving recyclability of products, making it also um, easy to do, to recycle all around the world because products are, you know, produced in one place, but consumed possibly, you know, in other parts of the world, you know, are we, are we using the same language when it comes to to the management of, of these products. Of course, looking also at, at, the, at the use of alternative materials, wherever it might be feasible and, 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 and useful and viable. Um, you know, all the way downstream to, you know, the, the waste management issue. Of course, you know, we still have many parts of the world where waste collection is, is you know, non-existent or, or very limited. So that's also a big issue that, that needs to be tackled. And uh, of course, you know, raising awareness, you know, the important, you know, of, of taking action at every level, you know, at a, at a governmental level and, and, you know, government at national, you know, state, local level, um, but also us as, as individuals and what we can also do in terms of, of uh, you know, getting companies to to change some of their practices. I mean, we, we do have, we do have, you um, some some power at the at the individual level as well, especially when it's you know when it's concentrated into campaigns like this or other types of of efforts, and of course working closely with with the private sector. You know, this is there are so many opportunities at various scales, and and we, you know, we really embrace those that that have already been formed, and I think we're gonna continue to look for additional partnerships and uh, hopefully inspire other partnerships as well. You know, it doesn't need to be all as part of the Clean Seas uh, campaign, but, but hopefully we'll be able to, to catalyze uh, additional action. 
So just while we're on the subject of the private sector, a couple of questions about um, what were the challenges of getting the private sector on board? And do you have examples of some, some successes where the private sector is changing some of their practices? So as part of this campaign, you know, as I mentioned, we're, we're still in phase one. I mean, we're still finishing phase one. So, so you know, the, these partnerships have really been uh, pretty much initiated. Uh, but, you know, there there's um, a collaboration, for example, with, with uh, Dell computers who have been working with the Lonely Well Foundation in looking at ways to, you know, utilize a, marine plastics, recover, recovered marine plastics into some of their their products or their packaging, you know, how can we scale this up into looking at, um, you know, reducing the, the plastic footprint along its its production, a, along the production of companies such as Dell, and, you know, looking at, at this uh, from a more holistic perspective you know those are the kinds of things that we're hoping to to be able to deepen in the in the next phase uh, there's been collaboration for example with the the Volvo uh, ocean race which is has been a really also great way to to raise awareness about the issue so this this uh, boat is going you know through various parts of the world and i am now going to forget exactly when i think it's it, it it's going to be in rhode island i i believe in may of this year so you know that's a, a another a, a way of in which we've partnered with the private sector in this case in terms of raising awareness on the issue but really ultimately we do want to um you know help companies think about their overall plastic footprint along the full uh, life cycle of, of their products, along the whole plastic value chain, and of course also look at the possibility of, of alternative materials when, when, that is, uh, when that is feasible. Thanks. So I have a question from Hallie Carter and Rachel C. They had this similar question, which is what messages work the best in terms of educating citizens about the effects of plastics and encouraging behavior change? Well, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I have to admit that I am not the communications expert behind this uh, this uh, communications campaign, but uh, you know, I think many of the things that have, you know, I think that we we have not just as part of this, this campaign, but as part of many campaigns that are happening around the world. I think that the issue of marine litter you know, has garnered a lot of attention because it, it's it's very visible and you can see the impacts on on entangled wildlife. You can see, you know, the impacts on 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 marine birds that, you know, die with their, their uh, guts full of plastic and all that. So it's it's a very, um, you know, visual type of, of pollution. What we're trying to do, though, is take um, take this opportunity of, of this, you know, horrible problem that is happening in the marine environment to really look at a much broader issue of, um, of plastic management and pollution. I mean, all, even though the, the numbers are quite high, it, you know, 8, 8 million tons of plastic enter the ocean every year, but that's only a fraction of, of the plastics that are a very small pl a fraction of the plastics that are produced and that are then, you know, either landfilled or incinerated or, you know, managed or mismanaged in many ways. So I think, you know, we, we have this opportunity to, to because there's been so much attention and, and attention is really growing on the issue of, of the, the effects on the marine environment and on coastal communities, et cetera, to really tackle this much, much bigger issue of, uh, of, of plastic pollution in general. Mm -hmm. And um, a, a couple of questions about how you plan to measure your success in terms of, for example, reduction in marine litter. Do you, do you have ideas about how you, uh, what that looks like? Yeah, I would probably have to um, refer you to our, our campaign coordinators, which are in, in, um, in Nairobi, and they, you know, I'm sure we do have some metrics in place and I don't, I just don't have the details. Um, but, you know, one, yeah, maybe maybe that's what I can do. I can I can try to find a little bit more information specifically on on how we're going to be, um, 
you know, measuring success <laughs> in this campaign. Yeah, that would be great. And and, uh, and, and I will maybe, maybe I can mention one thing on this, though. You know, we do ha we don't have yet. You know, we have some some good initial studies. You know, uh, and and some good initial information about the amount of of a uh, marine litter around the world, about what happens everywhere. But we don't have a harmonized. Uh, monitoring framework where we can compare data all around the world and that's been one of the things that uh, these resolutions uh, at the United Nations Environment Assembly has have been calling for uh, you know as, as, as well as many others let's also make sure that we can measure measure the problem better to then be able to measure the 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 effects of some of the practices that we are taking both at the policy level at the uh, awareness raising level and all that so there is a there is a drive to do better uh, monitoring of of marine plastics and to really standardize those efforts so I have a question from Sarah Anker who is a county legislator in Suffolk County New York and she is um, she says she's been working with private partners and residents to spearhead legislation including banning microbeads but she's very interested in hearing examples of what government has done to reduce plastic pollution and i've seen that from a couple of other questions too do you have some examples of case studies and are you collecting those yes so there are um so we we developed a, a I think a couple of years ago, what what hopefully is is a, a useful tool. It's the marine litter legislation toolkit uh, that was developed uh, in in collaboration with the. Uh, I think it, I, I'm I'm going to be I'm not, I'm not sure <laughs> that which which was the institution, uh, but uh, we. Um, so that has some information, of course, that that was collected, you know, up up until a certain stage. And I know that as part of broader efforts of not necessarily the Clean Seas campaign, but the Global Partnership on Marine Litter, uh, part of the effort is to have a more, um, you know, a, a, re a repository of of some of this uh, information because we are very much aware that. Um, actions are being taken at various levels of government all around the world and it's it's not necessary or useful to to reinvent the wheels it's good to be able to learn from what worked or didn't in other parts of the world or in or in other uh, cities in 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 one same state uh, you know at, at various levels to be able to share um this information and and there ha there is an effort within the global partnership on marine litter to have a this information better better accessible and i will i will i can follow up um when when i send the slides with a bit more information on the um you know on, on where to access some of this information that's great because i'm really impressed and encouraged by all the great questions um, from people who are involved in these issues at the local level and looking for partners and examples and models to follow. Um, and of course, there is a question here also about looking for financing to conduct some of these activities. I don't know if, can you say anything about efforts to direct more funding to these efforts? Um, <clears throat> Well, that uh, not necessarily as part of the the, the clean seas campaign. I I, I I don't think our big uh, effort here is to to mobilize um, necessarily financial resources. What we're really interested is in in mobilizing partnerships and and looking for opportunities to to work with you know with those that are um, able to to help us change some of the 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 practices that need changing and to to drive you know also better consumption and production practices to work with with companies with governments um so this is not really so much a a, a funding mobilizing effort of course we need we need funds to you know to to do this and and um you know various governments and and such have have provided a, a lot of support to 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 this campaign but I think uh, you know f funding efforts can happen at you know depending on on the type of of, uh, of activity or, or goal that that each group has you know I think it, they're going to vary a lot. But we as a as a UN entity, um, our, our main 
effort here is not necessarily to, to fundraise, but to really leverage partnerships. Great. And, you know, you mentioned uh, World Environment Day uh, and a couple of events, and we have a comment from Rachel Cochia who says, can you speak also about World Ocean Day on June 8th? Because that will also be focused on plastic pollution and preventing marine litter. Yes, so so World Ocean Day, um, it, you know, it's not officially a UN <laughs> a UN day, but we also try to to always have activities during that day, and we partner, for example, in in the North America office, we've we've partnered with with various uh, entities in the past on on celebrations for World Ocean Day. This year, because the the topic of World Environment Day, which is only a few days before, uh, is on 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 plastic pollution, and you know there's going to be a, a strong emphasis on 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 marine plastics. Um, there are various opportunities where we which we're currently looking into in terms of partnering with organizations in the U.S. and in Canada to do a awareness raising events. A, you know, in, in, in this region. But the same is happening, you know, all around the world. And I think, you know, this year for sure, both of these, uh, you know, days, the World Environment Day and the World Oceans Day are definitely going to be very well tied together um, in, in, in many events. Absolutely. So I'm seeing a couple of questions about specific regions and people who are interested in what's happening at a regional scale. Jim Gamble asks, uh, given that evidence shows that marine litter, like many contaminants, tends to accumulate in the Arctic, are there plans to uh, look at Arctic-specific outreach and activities on marine litter? So, you know, I'm, I'm not sure necessarily as part of, of this campaign per se, although, of course, you know, many of the, the countries that have a, made a commitments are part of the, the Arctic. And uh, we work with the Arctic Council on, on various issues, including on, on, um, on marine pollution issues. So there's definitely various, various um, engage you know collaborations on their way to look at the issue specifically in the in the arctic i mean we're not part of the the arctic council of course but we're observers and we we do partner with both with individual countries but also with with the arctic council as a whole to look at the issue of marine litter and i think you know the the current um you know presidency of uh, the arctic uh, Council in in Finland, and you know the the fact that also the you know Canada is engaging much further on this topic, and very you know various of the of the countries that are um, part of the of the Arctic uh, are are really taking on this issue of marine litter. So I think we we are going to be seeing more more research done and and many more you know much more action to to try to to tackle the issue. And, and to look at the, the effects that it's having on the Arctic as well. Thanks. Um, and so then I also have some questions. You mentioned, you know, the challenges of uh, marine litter and litter in general in developing countries where waste management is not well developed. And uh, so there's some questions about um, does this partnership include efforts to address waste management in, you know, developing countries where they don't have the same infrastructure and to try to encourage more recycling and reuse? Yeah, so of course the, the you know waste management is is a you know one of the the, the key aspects of reducing marine debris and it, and probably the the most you know one of the most immediate ones, especially in places where you know where there's very little uh, or very insufficient waste management. You know, there's a lot of a lot of benefits, you know, beyond reducing marine litter uh, to, to public health and 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 other many many other things, other benefits of of improving waste management. So this is definitely one component in which we we are collaborating and engaging. We do like we do look at the issue of waste management from a from from the whole hierarchy of of waste management, where we really want to. Um, make sure that we prioritize on prevention um, efforts, you know, reducing uh, the, 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 
you know, reducing the amount of waste, reducing the, the consumption of, of single-use plastics, for example, you know, reducing or eliminating, you know, the use of, of unnecessary microplastics, such as the, the, the microbeads that are put in, in cosmetic products and, and others. So we look at, at the full um, waste hierarchy and, you know, we want to prioritize on the efforts um, you know, on the prevention side, but of course we at the same time and, and very urgently and for many reasons, in addition to marine litter, need to also work on the waste management side. So yes, that's definitely, uh, you know, a, a big a big part of the, of the problem. And I think, you know, some of these solutions are going to be more relevant in, in, in different parts of the world, depending on, on the, on the, you know the main issues, the main sources at, at every at every country, every part of the world. So you know, I think part of our um, the way that we can collaborate with with some of the countries making these uh, commitments, you know, through clean seas or working on the issue, you know, in any other ways, is to help them, you know, look at the range of options that they have and and that that they have and work on prioritizing, you know, in the in the immediate term what are some of the actions that need to be taken but then also you know in, in the long term to reduce um yeah to reduce the, the plastic pollution both on land and, and on the oceans and you mentioned microplastics uh, matt miller had asked about um, how you're engaging plastic and microplastic researchers can you talk a little bit about the sort of science and research side of, of trying to encourage innovation and uh, in the reduction of plastics? So UN environment, as, you know, not necessarily again as part of, you know, the, this this Clean Seas campaign, although all of this information feeds into the Clean Seas campaign, but we have been working, you know, both as part of the global partnership on marine litter, um, also with the uh, GESAMP, a group of experts, uh, you know, on, on marine pollution of the UN, on uh, ramping up the, the research and really synthesizing also a lot of the research that's being done uh, on microplastics all around the world. And, you know, there's been various uh, reports. There's a, a big report that was generated um, as, as an outcome of the first United Nations Environment Assembly was to really do a, a study of, of, of what's happening right now on, on, on marine litter and microplastics, which has, I think, a lot of useful information, um, you know, on that. And I, I can certainly also provide links to that. But so, yes, we, you know, we, we do collaborate with, with academic institutions, um, you know, through the GESAMP, through the Global Partnership on Marine Litter, um, you know, to and, and, and we encourage, of course, you know, more scientific information to be coming out to, to really inform our actions, both in terms of this campaign, the Clean Seas campaign, but also broader actions that we're taking on this topic, you know, other in a, you know, the issue of, of, of um, the potential impacts on, on public health, you know, though there are many, many areas that really need a lot more research and attention um, and that are important fundamentals for how we move forward on on campaigns like this and, and especially the actions that we're hoping to get as, as, as an outcome of the campaign. So it's an interesting question from Carly Hoffman asking about cruise ships and she uh, says, how can cruise ships influence our guests in encouraging behavior change? We are trying to reduce packaging but have strict policies that prevent marine littering. However, we bring our guests to places all over the world that cannot sustain the populations that we drop off. So here you have uh, someone who's trying to do the right thing and looking for some support and help in how to best to do that. Yeah, and that's definitely a, a, a key industry to, to engage. I, I think, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if my my colleagues, especially in at headquarters, who are really the ones leading these efforts, both on on marine litter in general and also uh, on the clean seas campaign, uh, you know, I'm I'm pretty sure that they are, um, you know, reaching out to to the the cruise ship industry because that that's definitely, you know, a, a, a 
a big problem. It's a big problem in the Caribbean. It's a big problem in, in places where the there's not enough uh, infrastructure, waste management infrastructure in the in the islands to tackle the huge amounts of, of waste that, that come from this cruise ship cruise ships and you know of course then part of the part of what we would want to advocate is to try to make their foot their plastic footprint lower you know try to reduce the use of single use plastics i mean we can't just um hope to get countries to increase their waste management capacities we should also aim for this uh, you know the cruise ship uh, industry to reduce their own use of disposable plastics especially single use plastics so that you know <laughs> much much less has to be dumped in in whichever port they they happen to be uh there's a question from dotty hartman who asked can you say a little bit more about the my little plastic footprint app I, I can say a bit because I must admit I, I only recently downloaded and started looking at it. Um, it was uh, it, it's being um, done in collaboration with the Plastic Soup Foundation. Um, if you you know if you if you go to to you know if you search for apps it's it's the only you know the only one with that name that you're going to find and it really from 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 at least the 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 bits that I was able to do. Um, it, just to see what what the app was about, it encourage it, it gives information about. Uh, so it, it's really aimed at a broad audience. You know, for those of us who've been dealing with the issue for a while, you know, we can we'll, we'll know a lot of the information. But for for those who don't, you know, it does provide some you know useful and succinct information about some of the issues, and it also encourages people to make. Um, you know, sometimes very simple changes in their uh, consumption practices. So, for example, you, you can make a commitment to uh, refuse uh, uh, plastic straws in, in you know, in, in, any, in restaurants or any venues. And it will calculate, um, depending on how many straws you think you're going to avoid per week, it will calculate how many grams of plastics you will be um, saving, uh, you know, and and the same with several other things, you know, re reducing, um, you know, using your reusable uh, grocery bags, etc. So you're able to say well, about how many you use per week, how many, therefore, you will be avoiding, and so how it's it calculates how you reduce your plastic footprint. So that's a great tool for individuals to see how they're doing and, and to have gradual improvement over time. And then I have a question here from Sarah Doolittle Llanos who, who asks, um, how are companies and governments held accountable for their pledges? And, and uh, does UNEP have a role in terms of, uh, of looking at those pledges and how they've been fulfilled? Yes, yeah, so that's that's part of the of you know of, of the aim of the campaign, and especially I think as we the, the big push in the first year, as you know, as as I understand it, was to really uh, raise awareness and try to get um, people and governments, etc., to to commit and 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 do and to start also partnerships with with the the private sector. I, I think actually the the partnership side of thing was supposed to be really more part of, of phase two, but because there were already some actors really re eager to engage and some good opportunities, it, it started in the in the first phase of the campaign. So yes, the, the commitments uh, are going to be tracked and, uh, you know, monitored and, you know, obviously there are various uh, levels of, of commitments and, and various different types of actions that that governments, for example, are are undertaken. But um, you know, we we will, I suppose, periodically report on on how we're doing. Or for sure, we'll have a a, a mechanism of having you know of of uh, looking at what's happening with with this uh, uh, with these commitments and what successes have been achieved. And I'm sure you know when successes are achieved, um, you know you'll be seeing them in the in the Clean Seas campaign, in the Twitter uh, account for Clean Seas, and so you know it it really is about sharing a both information about the problems and all that, but also sharing some of the good practices that are happening and some of the gains that 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 are 
uh, happening all around the world by, by various types of, of stakeholders. Yeah, and I think that information sharing is so important. When I look at the questions that have come in, there's so much interest and commitment from people who want to help and are looking for ways to help. And you mentioned, Carla, the Marine Litter Legislation Toolkit. Are there any other toolkits that are available now or being developed to help support sort of community and local level efforts to reduce marine plastic? So that toolkit was, as I said, prepared a couple of years ago. And if I could open my, yeah, I'm just unsure about, uh, I, I don't want to mess up the the, the presentation slides here. Um, but there's also effort, you know, additional efforts underway. For example, in this last uh, United Nations Environment Assembly resolution on marine litter and microplastics, you know, one of the, the things that's going to happen is to have this ad hoc open-ended expert group uh, looking at the issue and as part of the things that that they're going to be looking at are you know what are some of the key barriers to to combating a marine litter and microplastics uh, also identifying the range of national regional and international responses to the issues including a voluntary but also legally uh, legal and policy approaches um, uh, yeah, so so there's there's various. I, I'm not sure. I, I suppose that will at some point probably be synthesized in in the way of a report. But there's there's been various various um, efforts to try to look at um, you know what what tools are there. But I think the the most you know the the most useful one right now would be this. Um, maybe it's I'll see if I can look it up in my in my. I think it's called Marine Litter uh, Legislation Toolkit. If I if I'm correct. Okay. Well, I, I will. Hopefully, people can find it, and you know, we will uh, provide you with all the names of people who participated in their questions. So I know we're not going to get it to every single question, Carla, but you will you will have them in case there are other folks that you need to follow up with. Yes, and we do have. If you if you go to the the Clean Seas uh, website and also to the UN Environment website and search for the Global Partnership on Marine Litter, there's many resources in that in the page. This is the the, the page of the the GPA, the Global Program of Action for the Protection of the Marine Environment for Land Based Activities. Sorry for the long name, but if you search UN Environment. GPA Global Program of Action, you will be able to to see information about the three main partnerships that are currently undertaken by by uh, the GPA, which are on on marine litter, on nutrients, and on wastewater. And then there's also publications, um, a list of publications that have been produced on these topics, and they include, you know, the the a, the marine litter legislation toolkit, which I just mentioned, but also other very useful, I think, <laughs> very useful um, things such as the uh, marine litter vital graphics report, which was produced, um, a, I think, a year and a half or two years ago. Uh, one about uh, plastics in cosmetics. There's various other um, publications that UN Environment has been producing in collaboration with with other entities that I think could could be useful. Well, this has been a great discussion, and I think one. I point I'm coming away with is just how many people are involved in this effort. So I guess the last question I would ask is, um, you know, do, do you see clean seas as sort of an umbrella to, to bring a lot of these efforts together? Um, or, or how can people kind of navigate all of the various groups and efforts that are going on in this area? So I think that it depends on on where you're coming from. If you're coming from from an, an you know more wanting to do some, something as as individuals, you know the the idea is to provide you with with information, with possible actions that you can undertake, with you know really to to motivate that. Um, if it's at the at the government level, uh, you know if if you're part of a government that already has made commitments, then it would be great to also ensure 
sure that those commitments are followed through and and maybe you know to to organize either as individuals or as part of of uh, in, in, in non-governmental organizations or others to to try to find the best ways for those governments to to fulfill their commitments and also if you're if you're part of governments that that haven't yet joined you know you can also raise awareness about that uh, about the issue and try to get them to to commit you know the the, the idea of the the clean seas was really to have a global campaign that could bring in uh, commitments, examples, uh, lessons learned, etc., from from all around the world. I mean, there's many efforts happening in 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 many, you know, in in many parts of the world. And the idea was to, you know, try to, if not synthesize, at least have a, a an an avenue to put uh, to to bring together all these many different groups. And of course, please don't don't forget also the, you know, the work that we do as part of the global partnership on marine litter. In, in, through which all of these initiatives are also undertaken, and um, the 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 U.S. through the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration um, has been chairing this partnership for the last few years, and it's been really um, instrumental in in getting it off the ground. And hopefully, it will continue to move towards a more more of an implementation type of of partnership but so clean seas is you know it's, it's one element of what we're doing it's definitely you know a very ambitious element in terms of a you know reaching out all around the world to various sectors and and spurring action at various levels um but it it it, it it's feed it feeds into and it's it's fed from uh, uh, efforts that are done also at, at you know through bilaterals uh, bi bilateral relationships with with governments through partnerships with uh, companies or, or groups of companies and of course hopefully we are inspiring action also so at the individual level. Well, our time is up, but thank you so much, Carla. This was a great discussion. We really uh, enjoyed hearing from you and learned a lot. And I want to thank all of our participants and all the great work that people are doing. So thank you. Thank you so much.